Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. This is a unique host. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica wearing that hat today. You already know, <laughs> don't know. Gotta rock the hat. But anyway, you know, Madel, I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok, Threads. Just type in Boss Talk Podcast 101 on all platforms or Google, Apple, Spotify, iHeart, you name it, we're on it. But if you want to see our visuals, you definitely got to go subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you subscribe, you get exclusive content and you get to see all our full length interviews first before everybody else starts seeing it because he going to clip it, chop it, do all of that first before the full length interview come out. So if you want to be on top of it, go ahead and subscribe. And you say you love us, support our brand by clicking that join button. You can find that join button under each and every interview. The link is right there. Just click the link and you can go ahead and join. Thank you in advance and we love you. Man, hey man, we got a special guest in here today. This guy right here, man, I got on the phone with him, man. Shout out to GDP. And uh, man, GD put me in contact with this guy. Man, this guy's story is phenomenal. I had to get it on this show, man. He been through what a lot of people wouldn't have made it through. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and so I had to get that boy Derzai in the building, man. Oh, definitely. New Orleans in the building, New man. Orleans in the building. Stop playing, Night man. Night Ward in the Night building. Night Ward in the building, Downtown man. In the building. I told y'all niggas. I told y'all niggas, just like Boosie's daughter said, uh -huh. you know what I'm talking about? When I tell you, man, we got a show going over here, we got a show going over here, man. And listen, man, when I heard your story, when I seen everything from the, the bullets, charge to everything that you've been through, which we about to get into all that, but I know my wife gonna take it back further than that. Right. But boy, you got a story, and thank God that you made it through, bro. Man, thank God, and I thank you for that. You man, know, come on, man. You family man. now. Once well, you hit the door, locked in now. once you hit the door, locked in now. it's over. So, Dirty first of all, where you get that name from? I'm from the Desire Projects, and my name, nickname is Dirty. Dirty. So, the Dirty. Desire Projects, the big, one of the biggest projects one down there. One of the biggest there. projects in I've the world. I've never heard of that. No, how big is, how big is big. it? You say in the world? In the world, yeah. Why is it so, like, how big is it when you say in the world now? Yeah. How big is that project? Um, well, I don't know how exactly. You don't know square exactly. footage? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You want a nigga to tell you square footage? I know, but what oh, you no, say is the world. It's about 18 it's miles long. You don't come on, man. It's the biggest in New Orleans, for sure. Oh, OK. It's bigger yeah. than the Calio? Yeah, it's bigger than all projects. Wow. So tell me um, what makes, other than the size, what makes that project different from all the other projects? Well, ain't too much difference. Life in the projects is life in the project. You know, we might have a few different experiences because of the unique people that's there. You know, so there was people that's there, not there. So that's what actually just makes the difference. Mm -hmm. As far as the living, growing up in the ghetto is the ghetto. Mm -hmm. I know it's y'all accent. Sometimes depends on the project you're from. It's a little bit. Sometimes it's a little bit deeper. Sometimes it's not so mm -hmm. strong. Sometimes I just love the New Orleans accent. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, but it, they said. It just depends on what part you're from is how you speak. Yeah, because we all have our different lingo and things, you know, how we communicate mm -hmm. with each other. Just by certain things a person say, you could tell what part of the city you from. Who has the strongest accent down there? Because somebody told me it's when you really down there in the swamp. Mm -hmm. That's when you have that strong accent yeah, down well, there. Well, as far as that Cajun accent, mm -hmm. you know, you would say, I think our accent is more of Ebonics. Okay. You know, we, mm -hmm. we we create our own way of saying things. Mm -hmm. you know? Like when you say, what's down? Mm -hmm. What's down? You know, mm -hmm. what's down? That's just what's happening. Mm -hmm. But we, we merge it all together and make it just one, one, what's down? Right. Shout and out to my boy, Big Boz, man. Like, Boz was one that he had that deep accent when I interviewed him. Mm -hmm. Bosworth, uh, uh, man, like I said, you could tell he ain't letting it go. He one of them ones, man. And uh, No Limit is, is, you know, you heard of Boz. Yeah. I know uh -huh. you know Boz, man. Come on, Anthony. Boz was one of them ones, man. So, like, it'd be crazy to me just 
the work and the, everything that come off down there and the way when I visit down there just to be hanging out down there and just the history, even pre-Katrina and after Katrina because we went before Katrina and then I went after Katrina. I just didn't have Boss Talk 101, you know, before Katrina, but right. I, I just had this two years, but I'm just saying as far as the podcast go, mm -hmm. still been there 17 years. Mm -hmm. But but just coming down there each time, the culture is so thick, man. Yeah, Bourbon yeah. Street and all that yeah, stuff, you man. Get the experience, it's crazy. Another part of it every time you come, that you every get, time the food you crazy. Get the experience the last time. Yeah, she was pregnant with our first mm -hmm. uh, daughter, who's 18 now. Mm -hmm. So that was 18, 18 years, years ago, ago. Yeah. when when we were first came down. Me and her was together, come down there and just enjoyed the enjoyed the Bourbon Street and just the first, you know what I mean? Right. Just just getting to know the culture and. Just eating the food and just it. hanging out, and it was, and then of course we've been back several times since then. I love but love it. New Orleans. Yeah, I, I mean, you know traveled around and every place have you know something special you'll find about it that made you like it. And you know I'm kind of biased because I'm from New Orleans, but I'ma just go off the amount of tourists that come to the city. You know every year. Like New Orleans is a vibe. It's <laughs> <laughs> a vibe because it's, it's party 24-7. Yeah, mm. let's get into and, the background. And and But let me ask you a question because I know that um, some people would say in New Orleans there's a lot of people who speak French. Yeah. Is it? But is it everybody speak French? No. It's because it's a part of y'all's life, right? Yeah, it's a part of New Orleans. New Orleans. It's not a part of my life. Okay. Like, so is it I a certain part French. of New Orleans? No, that's really old in New Orleans. Okay. With, when New Orleans was founded, you know, back, mm -hmm. this, this way back, you know, when the French actually was, you know, in control of New Orleans, but their influence is still, you know, felt throughout New Orleans. Right. But it would really take like a person Older, older than myself. Well, Bob broke it down to us. Yeah, who nah, I know, but we didn't talk about um, speaking about French, actually. French. Yeah. yeah. Nah, I don't really know anyone that speaks French. That speak French down there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> These young niggas ain't worried about no I'm damn just French. Nah, These young about niggas about worried about trying to mm -hmm. rap, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, go down there and have a good time whenever the city turned up. They ain't trying, they, they having a great life. Yeah. They're not trying to figure out the history of what happened with the French. Were you raised with your mom and dad? Yeah, I was raised with both parents. With both parents? That's a blessing because yeah, a lot a of people don't. Myself. I'm blessed, though. I've been blessed from the beginning. Mm. God already had them pick me for his purpose already. That's mm. why all the things I went through is just was him building me, building right. my character, building my strength, building my faith. You know, that's all I, I look at it so that I can accomplish his mission. Mm hmm. You have siblings. You have siblings as well. Mm -hmm. Younger brother, younger sister. So you're the oldest. I'm the oldest. Wow. How much younger are they? Mm -hmm. My sister. We are each like four years apart. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, but did you, as a child, though, because you know how, as you get older, you realize how fortunate you were as a child with mom and dad growing up in the same household. But as a child, you did you realize that? Yeah, because none of my friends had their father living in a household with them, so it was noticeable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, okay, so growing up, did you always want to do music? What did you want to do when you were growing up? When I was growing up, I really didn't want to do anything. None? Like, I, I, the type of person I am, I just want to travel. But you got to have money to travel. Yeah, that's why I, I, I own businesses. At how old did you start your first business? Um, oh, when I first came up with a concept for Project Music, I had to probably be at least about 18, 19 years mm -hmm. old. I got it tattooed on me years before I actually got the company. I didn't get the company till 2005, but I got the tattoo on me out there in Houston when I went out there after Katrina, because mm. I knew I was going to do that. Mm. Wow, I said pre Katrina and post Katrina. You dealt with both of those. Yeah. Wow, that's hard. I was a rapper pre Katrina. Wow, already with a group called the YGs, L O G. What? Well, okay, and and who, who? How did you guys create your music? What you mean? I mean, far as produce it, how did y'all get it out? It was produced by Sinister. You know, Sinister okay. on the tracks. Yeah, Sinister on the tracks. The whole project was produced by Sinister. We was with. Guillotine Records, yeah, and we was really under LOG. Okay, you know, and he the one that 
presented us, we was two artists from the Desire Projects and two artists from the Florida Projects. Okay. So he took those four artists and put them together and made a group. How old were you? stopped a lot of conflict between the desire and the flaw. That's, be, that's so big. How old were you at that time? Um, 18. Oh, so everything started at 18. Yeah. yeah. Once I graduated from high school, mm -hmm. it was, you know, now I got to figure out what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And when the opportunity presented itself, I done it. But was it good? There's, I don't come here with no. Was it was good? good. I was during that time. Beginning. Was it going down? Let's not play around. Hey man, was it good? Just, you got. I got a song. Well, I ain't gonna say me. We have a song called Florida Desire. Right now, they put on still in the club, speak. and it's gonna. And I'm still club, gonna go. You <laughs> gonna go? I'm still getting paid to perform that song. Wow, that's big. So yeah. still making money off of that. Hey. That's huge. Mm-hmm. Cause after how many years is that? That was been that been since ninety nine. Oh wee! <laughs> and you still they they singing word for word down word there. Word, like that's that's stapled in, you know, because at the time when the Hot Boys was emerging, yeah, I remember we was the downtown group emerging. But you know, cash money wind up blowing up. Yeah, doing their thing, and you know, did you ever have run ins with any of the like 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 uh? What, what, what they, when I say running, just really, did you ever work with them? Uh, did you ever have dealing with Soldier Slim or any of those guys? Yeah, Soldier Slim was my partner, man. New Soldier. You met him before and everything? Yeah. Okay, so he was in Ma Magnolia, right? Yeah, Magnolia. How far is Magnolia from? Desire. New one in New Orleans is only 30 minutes. It apart. is. That's it what is. everybody None said. Is. No, this is, this is a small the area we talking about. It's well, not like... Out here, where you driving way nah. Okay, give me a Soldier Slim story then. Something that, that, that something well, that, you, you, that sticks out for you. Yeah, my partner Hog, Free Hog, he brought me up there in the Magnolia to meet Soldier Slim. You know, cause he he already had a relationship, but I already had a relationship like with Chaotic. You know, okay. with Bub, Cali or Bub, but he, he 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 took me up there to the Magnolia to meet Soldier Slim. So when I get out, you know, me being braggadocious, I'm telling Slim, man, look, I got the baddest mouthpiece in the city. So Slim, you know, hug me around my neck and we we walk up the street, let me hear something. So I'm rapping for him, rapping for him. He turned around, he said, hey, this could be the only downtown nigga on Cutthroat Committee. Mm. Wow, that's a big, that's a big up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, How did that make you big. feel to hear him say that? Then you were just, I, I, we just I, I talking. Felt, I felt solidified. Wow. So I solidified. Big dog just stabbed me. Big dog said, "You know, I you that one? I could be a part of this team, and I'm from downtown." Wow, that's crazy because a lot of people had those stories where they connected with him. It, when you think about, so we're gonna talk a little bit more about Soldier Slim. Mm -hmm. um, what when you think about Soldier Slim, like what's the best, the best uh, song, the one of the ones that stick out for you? Well, the one that, I'll pay for it. Nah, the one that I used to always be bumping is. That's my who. That's my <laughs> <laughs> that was that was my that was that my resonated song, with man. you. I felt like that was my song at that time. You know, yeah, young, dealing with females and yeah, that one. I, I used to like that one. Wow, you're yeah. a ladies man. Oh, <laughs> I'm just a gentleman, and ladies are attracted to that. My mom went raised me right. Oh, okay, that's hard, man. So when you think about just uh, you know, being from Louisiana and just all the things that the history and everything that it foretells like is it something that basically when a person comes to New Orleans is it something that 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 they got to go somewhere they got to go something they got to do what's, what what sticks out when you come to New Orleans well the food for sure the food for sure and you got to go like visit the French Quarter area yeah you yeah know, that's yeah. what the party going 24-7, especially if you're going around a certain time, like if they have, you know, an event in the city. Like, you know, Beyonce just recently was, that went down. was in the city. So the city was, you know, now if you go around the Superdome area where the concert at, or you go to Canal Street, you got people all over. So Canal Street is one thing that you need to visit. I wouldn't recommend you visiting no neighborhoods. Everybody like, say that. For real, I wouldn't. You like, like, let's go see the Magnolia. Let's right. Go. I wouldn't. Is it dangerous? 
just day before yesterday in New Orleans, the DA and his mother was carjacked. Wow. Mm. The district attorney. And everybody Jason knows Williams. who it is. Damn. You carjacked the district attorney? Come on, man. So, you know, that's where we at. Murder capital. To another place that people like to go to, for some reason, I, I, I have never been, I don't know if I want to go, is the cemeteries. The cemeteries? But yeah, a lot of, because they got a lot of important History. people that's, you know, buried in those oh. cemeteries. And then also, the cemeteries itself are unique because they're above ground right. cemeteries, you know. Right. Most people are buried in the ground. In New Orleans, people are buried above ground. Where else, where else do you know of that they bury people above ground? I don't Do you know, know anywhere else. It's because of where they de- de- where they're located. Because it's below sea level, so you right. know, it's prone to flooding. Mm. And I guess they had an experience where body start coming up, coming up out the ground. Right. Yeah, yeah. The ground yeah. got saturated enough, and yeah. So hey, on that documentary, you seen uh, uh, Soldier Slim, little Soldier Slim. Shout out. Uh, Shout out. Go to those. You know, to the that's where he did his part part of the documentary. And you could see, you know, the, the where they had the, all the, the mm-hmm. you know, the, the tombstones. tombstones. And it's crazy, man. Yeah. Let's get into your uh, your your whole accident because me and you talked about it on the phone, but we gotta go just go down through there, you know. Like um, anyway, like we gotta figure out what that was about from the start to the beginning. I, I don't, I want, I don't want the, I don't want the version. I want to hear everything that happened leading up to it for some reason. You know what I'm saying? But I can't. Give you that information because is it still it was a, no because it was a situation that I had no knowledge of. That's what you told me. All I was doing was giving a friend and his girlfriend a ride. How long ago did this happen? It's twenty twenty December third. Okay, I just was giving my partner and his girl a ride. Now I didn't know the situation that they was in. You didn't even know they business at all. I didn't know they business at all. What made you pick them up? That's my partner. He's partner. been my partner since Lil. And then you with your, your woman? Ain't no way I'm going to refuse Was he known ride. for having issues with people? It wasn't his issue. It oh. was the female issue. Really? The female was supposedly testifying against someone. You know how that goes? Mm. If somebody else wanted her out of here. And, and you didn't know that the, she that, I, that was I going on? I didn't know her like that. You know, okay. I just know her from as his his girlfriend. You know, I never built a relationship with her or anything like that. Because if, if this was this is in a short period of time that we talking about, so I never even really any acted with her as you know. That and she from time. down there. Yeah, she from down there too. But it's, whatever this situation happened with them, they, they spotted these people, and instead of them informing me of that, they just come and ask for the ride, trying to get a ride from around there. Wow. But here, when they get in the car with me, I stop at the, we get off the interview on the interstate, all the way get off the interstate. When I stop at the red light, a truck pull on side me. Dude jump out and they were shooting in her window, shooting her, but the bullets was coming through the back of my seat. She was sitting, you know, right. She was sitting behind you? No, she was sitting behind him. Behind him? Yeah, so okay. when they shooting, they shooting and they coming across to mm-hmm. my seat. Damn. I got hit nine times. Nine times. Where did, did it chopper? hit you? With an AK-47. With an AK-47. Where yeah. did it hit you? Where did you Most get hit? Most of them was in my back. Two of them hit my wrist. That's why my hand had to be amputated because it was broke. So right. it was direct? So, it yeah, it hit, it hit right here. It hit right here. Like, actually just tore all that, you know, tore it up. Yeah. yeah I was my, It wasn't no bigger than this right here, my arm. Yeah. So just imagine two AK-47 rounds hitting this. It's, it's just, it it's was gone. just hanging it's like hanging. this. So I'm driving, trying to get to the hospital, like, because I didn't know I was shot all them times. I felt like I was shot, but I didn't know I was shot The drill was still times. rushing. Yeah. I'm gone. My mind automatically clicked the survival move. But you lucky you can even stand or walk, and you said, so it, the seven sh- other shots hit you all in your back? You no, know, one hit me in, in this arm right here, and they told me it's the one that bled the most. It couldn't stop bleeding. It was just a little nick on, on the... It's because of where it hit. Probably. And but, then the other ones? But yeah, the rest of them was in my back. But it didn't hit your spine, didn't hit any of that sort of stuff. That's a blessing. But one of them did come through my back right here and come out my heart. Wow. Come so they, out your heart? Yes. Yeah, so they, <clears throat> they had to crack my chest open. 
I have a plate that's holding my chest and my rib cage together to do surgery on my heart. Man, people saved my life. From the story, even me hearing it myself, I'm like, oh. That's nothing but God. If I say anything else, like, I just be lying. So the girl, did she survive? She didn't survive. Did he survive? He survived. He got hit because he jumped from the passenger seat to the back, you know, my girl. Oh, he trying to protect her. Yeah, but see, that was also the thing that, because I didn't remember what happened when I first woke up. But as my memory came back, the thing that I remember that made me know he knew what was going on, when the shots went off, you said, my girl. Wow. In New Orleans, me, you, and your girl, what make you think when shots go off, it's, it's directed girl. to your girl. Right. You said, yeah. You already knew what the situation was. How so, many times did he get shot? Nah, he just got hit, grazed. Like, he, he wasn't nothing major. Nothing major. He took major. himself out the hospital, so he, he wasn't wow. nothing major. And he went out of town, and I haven't seen him since. So you never seen him again? No. Nah, I talked to him, but I haven't seen him. What How long were you? Hold on. What I was that conversation like? I talked to him and explained like? to him that we not partners no more. Wow, so he God, was like, man. He called you or you called him? He called me. He kept trying to contact me, contact me, and I'm, you know, I ain't trying to deal with him. So when you so finally, finally talked to like, him? Like, look, because he said, man, look, I just need to holler at you, even if it is on some dumb shit. So I'm like, what's up? What's happening? We're on FaceTime. What's up? What's happening? Man, man, you know I have. I said, look, fuck all that. I said, dog, no, check this out. You're not my partner no more, man. You're not my partner. I said, your partner, dirt that you know. You got him killed. I have a tattoo on me right here. It say, Old Dirt Died, 10, 3, 20, man. Your partner that you know, you got him killed. Dirt with the one hand and a, you don't know me. You never even saw me in person, man. Wow. Like, look, stop contacting me, man. You know, you know leave that alone. That's the, yeah, so he, he, yeah, cause he, cause that 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 pretty much changed everything. Changed everything, man. I don't care. And y'all been knowing each other for for a long time since y'all was kids. Man, since we were there, man, it's my partner, my brother. And he should have knew not to do that, is what you're saying. Of course, you know how the game go, man. Wow. And he ran it to me on some. She wasn't, you know, man. She, I ain't really know she wasn't telling me this, that, and the third. But like I said, when them shots went up, you holler, my girl. Wow. You didn't think they were shooting you. You didn't think they were shooting me. You thought you, they were shooting her. Yeah, because you understood what was going on. I didn't know what was going on. Y'all two knew what was happening. And I yeah. never heard that female say not one word, unless the first bullet just killed her, because she never hollered, screamed, nothing. Wow. So, and that's crazy. Did even her family? Did they? Did did they try to contact you? Nah. I, hey, I did you ever see them? Her. You don't know her like I that. I don't know her like that for her family to contact me or anything. Did you like tell that. old boy you knew that girl, whoever this course, man. And he was like, he telling me like, man, she didn't. But then he also in the midst of the conversation, he said, man, I saw that truck out there. I know you did. Of course, I know you did. Wow. And so how long had you been at the hospital when he made this call to you? Nah, this call was just um, this year. Oh, this call was recently. Yeah, this call was you just you this was, year. You've been trying to keep him away from, he keep trying nah, to get your I number. Called him, I called him when I first woke up, when I first got, you know, a, well enough because I couldn't talk. I had to learn how to talk again. Yeah, we're going to get into that. How long wow. were you in the hospital for? I went in the hospital. I got shot in December and I came out like April. Okay. Okay. So, but you but you couldn't talk. So, at the end of the day, you had to build yourself back up to even be able to yeah, talk. I had to go to these different therapy, therapy and stuff. How many surgeries did right you now. have? Well, I had six to close my stomach up. Cause you got a scar right here on your stomach, don't yeah, you? Yeah, it run from my like my pelvic area all the way all the way to, up to up your my heart. to your heart. Yeah. That's crazy, cause you know I always think that if you get shot in your heart, you done. Yeah, that's why my skull is like an autopsy skull. They ain't even thought I was gonna make it. They told my parents. They let my parents come see me with the opened up. Really? Yeah, because they, they, they figured, you know, it's saving me enough to where my family could come in with it. But they just don't know my God. Come on, man. Mm. Let's talk about, let's talk about the, 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 
the surgery, like when you went in, you only couldn't go by what you heard after you right. after that they right. put you out. I I was out from when I passed out in the car. How long did you pass out in the car? Yeah, I passed out. I didn't make it to the hospital. Okay, let's talk about you that. How, what happened? You crashed? Yeah, I was losing too much blood. I was shot nine times. And he I'm was in there too. To drive to the hospital, but he was back there crying and you know mourning his his girl. So when y'all crashed, the ambulance came. I don't know what happened when I crashed. Did you even hear or you ain't even know or no? Well, Nobody hasn't told you? Obviously the ambulance came. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. From but they didn't tell you like how long it took them to he, come, listen, all that listen. stuff? He was able to get out and fl oh, flag okay. someone down. But the crazy part is he flagged the people down and said, my girl. Wow. Mm -hmm. It took for someone to pass and say, hey, we got someone behind the wheel too. Wow. And how do you know that? You heard him? No, this is, you know. No, he had already passed out. Somebody told you. Somebody told the, Yeah, this was from the, you know, the, the people. The people that got you. I got to ask, so what What street when, okay, because you said this was a stoplight when you stopped when the truck, you know, pulled up. What street did this happen on? Crowder. Crowder. Crowder Boulevard in New Orleans East. And then when you drove, what street did you have that wreck on? How far did you get? I drove, all right, so Crowder, I turned down Lake Forest, and I drove all the way to Lake Forest and Reed, which would be the next, you know, across street. Okay, and that's or where you had the wreck. Exit if you was getting off the interstate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the hospital is right there to my right. Oh, so you was, was not was, far was from almost, it. I was almost there, but they said, good thing I didn't make it there because I probably would have died. That hospital don't have a trauma unit. That's not that type of hospital. So when they came and picked up, they had so to take you somewhere else. They still had to bring me to University Medical Center, the main hospital, mm. in order to save my life. But they was able to transport me from where I was at in New Orleans East all the way to like around the Superdome to the hospital. Kept me alive. It kept me alive. <laughs> it saved my life. Wow. Mm. Cause when you think about the 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 time for you to get there, you out. No. No, when you when when the ambulance pick you yeah, up, you out. Out. How long were you out? How many surgeries did you you w went through before you woke up? But what? A total surgery. I don't, I, don't, I don't really know. You don't even know. Nah, see, cause that shit, I I never even like once I was alive, man. I just started worshiping God and praying. Come and on, man. Thanking God, man. Boy, the rest of that don't matter. Don't matter. You know, but it's information for. You know, for the people, like so that yeah, yeah, yeah. But nah, I have to ask my mom. She was, she would help. Yeah, she she knows the whole everything, every everything. She would help. Yeah, yeah because and, she and praying. Always, she she says she never felt like I was gonna die. That's that's hard, man. That's fate. Because she that's came one to thing. the hospital and she had COVID at the time. Wow, wheelchair bound COVID. Good and they so let her in there. Full blown, blown COVID. And they let her in there. Yeah, but we didn't disclose to them that she had oh, COVID. Okay. But they didn't disclose to them that she had COVID. They knew they was a stop her from. She had to get to a baby. Come. She had to come. But when she got to the hospital, she told everybody, hey, no, stop all that crying. Y'all ain't about to cry my child away. She's strong in faith. That's why I'm strong in faith. That's, That's real. taught me how to pray. So you get up, when you come, when you come to, tell me about that. When I come to, <laughs> I raise my head up and I look around and I'm fucked up. I don't know what happened to me. Who was the first person you when saw? I hurt. Nobody. Nobody wasn't in there when you? It was COVID. No mm -hmm. visitors, no, no none of that. So I woke up. Just there, but my mother was there. My mother was there. I looked up. I look around. I see my hand gone. Like, cause this shit was healed. Yeah. Already. Already healed. It was healed when I saw it. But the staples in this, just the cut was still open, but my, this was healed. So you so, had been in there a while. That's what I'm telling you. Look, I had just got a fresh haircut, like hours before this happened. 
And when I woke up, I had a bush. Nigga had a damn a whole afro. <laughs> I had a bush. And beard got a, and everything. A baby Michael Jackson. That's how that's how long I was out, man. But you came alive, and I thank God for it. And, and when you and when you woke up. Man, that had to be I different. I woke up, I saw my arm was gone. I thought I was tripping. I just laid back again. And I raised back up again. And I moved. And when I moved and it really was gone, I guess the look on my face made my mother be like, wondering what happened to your hand. I'm like, yeah, you know, I can't talk. So I'm just shaking my head. She was like, you don't remember? I'm like, nah. So you don't remember? No, no. I'm like, nah. So she said, just, well, you just cut. So she didn't tell me anything. Which kept me up every night. <laughs> How like, long I did never, it take? I never, went back to sleep. I never went to sleep. She's like, what the hell happened? I never went to sleep. She used to call the hospital three o'clock every morning to check on me. And every morning they tell her, Oh, he he's sitting up in there. <laughs> <laughs> My mind, I couldn't I couldn't figure out what, what happened, happened to me and I never been hurt like that before. Yeah. Like I'd never been. I didn't. So you couldn't even remember back to my, the shooting or none of that. Not at that. At that time. Not at that time. Initially waking up under medication and things like that. I don't know. You were drawing a blank. But how long did it take for before somebody actually told you what happened? The police. When they did they come to, in? They wanted to question me. Okay. But they had to wait till I was able to start talking. How long did it take you to regain your voice? Hmm. I'm not sure. I could give you an exact timetable. I don't really know. I don't, all that shit just like kind of cloudy. A, a situation that I just leave where it's at. And your voice went because of where the no. bullet hit? No. The first went from the surgery. <laughs> the surgery, man, I, I one of my kidneys. They removed my kidney. They removed wow. my kidney, my spleen. Yeah, like, so, you know, it's just the hand is just the damage that you could see. That you but it was see. a lot more damage done. A lot more damage. So they removed all of that because it was damaged. That was damaged. Because it's shot. I had a colostomy bag. You did? But I was able to get it reversed. The doctors couldn't even understand how it was healing up so fast. Right. And I told them how. That's God. But, you know. You told them? Yeah, because the, the head trauma surgeon told my son, man, your dad like a superhero, like Wolverine, because they couldn't, they bringing students into my room, and, you know, going over my case, they, they couldn't understand. I'm sitting up eating my, talking to them, and they're like, wow. This nigga healing back. Man, mm. God is awesome, man. When Did, God won't show come you on, man. He awesome, man. He man. Make sure you see. I'm talking about to be able to, he get hit nine times nine by times. a child, lose his arm. Yeah. And, and and look and still he understand that God was the reason for the season, man. Mm -hmm. A lot of people lost, man. If you don't believe there's a God, you're crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Your yeah. faith kept you going, didn't you? You're gonna suffer more than you think you suffer. Man, yeah, yeah. It's, it's coming to a time where all you're gonna have is God. Mm-hmm. And the people without God, amen. They screwed. One to be left standing, the other one to be taken away. Some people would even ask, like, did you, I know a lot of things you say you don't remember, but something like that is, maybe I watched too many movies or some, but did you recall ever having, like, an out-of-body experience or anything like that? No. Uh, they asked me, you ain't saw such and such? Right. <laughs> and yeah. you like, hell no, I ain't <laughs> seen nobody. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to get back together. I ain't saw nobody. Probably no why I ain't saw nobody. Oh, I never crossed over. Already? I never went nowhere. Like my mama said. My mama said, my son is still in there. By faith. It's mm -hmm. already done. And she rode with that. Now, you got to think about it, though. Let's, let's talk about it, man, for a minute. Trying to get back to walking. Trying to understand how to use your arm at, with what you got now. Yeah. How was that? How did you figure it out? Because we see you now. Listen. I hug you when you come through the door. You move it. Everything seemed to be all right. Listen, God already had me pre-programmed. Wow. Pre-programmed. He prepared me for the situation. Way when I didn't even know he was preparing me for the situation. How did he do that? Wow. By already implanting in me the confidence See, cause it, that's what it be. It be that lack of confidence to have a person not wanting to do this or not. To, 
Like not me. When not I, even when, for a when moment. When they told me I couldn't walk, I'm like, damn. They say, no, not you're not paralyzed or anything. They say you just been laying in a hospital so long you mm. haven't used your legs. I say, oh well, I'm gonna walk. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's I'm right. not paralyzed. Oh well, yeah, I'm a, I'm gonna walk. But walk. Right, man. So how was it getting up the, for the first time? It was it was a it's struggle, tough, wasn't it? It was a struggle, man. I'm Somebody had to like, help you up, and you they helping me up. I take a few steps, and I like ah, because did it hurt? You know your core. Your core is what. That's your, right. And that's my right. My core is damaged. Damaged. Like, it, it's sore. You know what I'm so that's affecting the strength that's going into your legs, and like all that play a part. Oh. Your body is made to work in unison. Uh huh. And when you take a part of that, or mess up a part of that, it, it, your body is out of unison. Wow. Until man. you just get back one with God and then you back one again. Wow. And and so you you when you say from the time that you were starting to get helped up to the time you was able to, you know, walk properly, mm -hmm. how long did that take? Oh, I I'll let you know. Oh, you still working on it? Still working on it. Come on, man. Cause <laughs> cause it, it cause now you start to look at the you know, being like Sore or having those pains, certain time. Do you ever have ever? That's right. Oh, that's something already you already explained yeah. to yeah. me that yeah. I'm gonna deal with this forever. Ever, you know. So, but I accepted it. Okay. Is it worse in the winter time? Of course. The the minute the weather changed, I felt it. <clears throat> because this this is gonna let me know this is very sensitive. You know, by yeah. being it's, it's sensitive, it's picking up on. The breeze is like anything. That's why you got mm -hmm. it covered like that. Covered, you know. My mom made this for me, so yeah. to cover your, so to cover yep. you. It's just a, a sleeve, just a. It's cover. a sleeve, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it keep you. It, it just it keep, keep you, it warm. Keep it's it warm. Thick. It's, it's, it's thick. Mm -hmm. Wow, did that ever mess with you mentally? Like when you to say, man, now I got one of my limbs missing. Mm -hmm. You was always confident. He said, "Because God. God." That's hard. Bro. I don't question God, man. Do you that, do you ever catch the kids looking at you or anything like no, that? No, see, this is what I respect about kids. Kids gonna ask you. Yeah, they daring show is. See, I catch adults staring, staring at you. Okay. That's what the I dope. don't like. You don't like the adults staring, but the kids gonna say what? The kids gonna say what happened to you? And I tell them I got shot. Stay out the streets. <laughs> so that that it become a testimony yeah. to help help people. That's what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. I'm alive to be a testimony to help people. That's hard. Not for me. Not for me to do my thing to be doing podcasts and nah, that, that ain't what it's about. That's just you know a part, part of the of journey. It. That's right. To, yeah, but that ain't what it's about. When you think well, what I like, sorry, but hold on. But you know what I like about the fact that you said it's a testimony is the fact that it wasn't you weren't the one in the streets or doing anything bad or anything like that. This could have happened to anybody, anybody. Yeah. and that's what people don't understand. People but think I that I'm not out. Stuff bad. That's oh, why you I was able to accept it. Oh, it was, okay, it was just my turn. Mm. So you had already experienced. Did you had things? My mind was programmed for this. So I mm. got shot and didn't panic. I, just, right, I drove to the hospital. Damn, the hospital right there. Yeah. Yeah. In wow. the streets for so, a long so let, time. I, really? I, I, I want to talk about. So you could talk. You could help a lot of people because of that. I want to talk about like the people that did do the shooting. Did they ever catch them? You don't even know. Never even tried to find out. Never tried to find out. Because he didn't see who they were or nothing like that. I, I, Correct, I, but I, it could have been I, somebody I, around. But you know, you never know. People talk. Investigators. Nah. It never even came back to me through the streets who shot me. Wow. Never even can because they usually that that that's a cold lick there because the streets is where it, but the streets come tell me about who shot everybody else. That's what's crazy. I understand it wasn't for me. Why I suffer consequences if I don't have to? I totally understand. Mm. If I don't have, look, that wasn't for you. But you was in the car with the girl who was testifying. You feel me? Like if you in the streets, you know. You know. So can. what I did, I took my lick. Okay, that's that's where it goes. I can't be a gangster when it's beneficial. Yeah. But when it's bad, then I'm nah. It's, it is what it is, man. What was the advice that Booby Black gave you? Yeah, man. Still do anything you want to do. Wow. And he he 
shows me. You know, through his way, his living, like he been experienced. You know the situation in his life, driving. That's right. So it made me think mine should be any different. For I'm people like me, also. who don't know who Booby Black is, who is that? Booby Black is a OG from Uptown Magnolia Projects. He also was shot up and had, you know, arm um, amputated. Oh wow! Yeah. So wow. that's coming from somebody who's already been there. No, somebody who's been there, been through it already. Mm. Was it important? What, what? What? How did he even link it? He, you knew him already, or he just found you? Well, we have mutual people that we know. Uh, back again to my same partner, Hog. Who I was telling yeah. you, yeah, Free Hog, who hooked me up with Soldier Slim. He also hooked me up with Booby Black because he's Magnolia, so he have connections to these people, and he also was his family is from the Florida Project, also. So he's, you know, we have connections to both. He was able to. Did he come to the hospital or did you see him in the streets? Nah, he was in the streets. In the streets. He was at a Carver football game. And he just walked up to you and told you? Nah, we know each other. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, what's up, nigga? Talked on the phone. We, you know, see each other at certain events. And, but, you know, it was before my situation. So then when after the situation, nothing changed. It's the same thing. But like, look, it's all good, you know? Yeah. Just, just Still do you your thing, man. Still, Still do your do thing, thing, man. Don't, don't, that don't stop nothing. Don't stop nothing, man. You ain't stop nothing yet. Wow. What about, like, like when you think about the kids and every, your kids? How old are your kids? When I only have one kid. How old is I have a 17-year-old son. Wow. And he about to be Mr. Junior Tomorrow he play for Madison. Come on now, number nine. Number nine. Yeah, it's that's smooth. why you have the nine around your neck. No, nah, nine war. Nah, nine war. Nine war. Nine war. Nine. Everything is nine. Everything is nine. nine is the last number, man. That's there's no other number bigger than nine. So when you shooting dice, shoot nine. Come up, it's a it's a problem. Yeah, I'm betting whatever. Hey. I, <laughs> I always bet no nine, baby. I always bet no nine. Win or lose, I'm betting again. Wow. Um, BG comes home. Yeah. Uh, he home now. Um, music and everything. He's he's getting back to it. Like, uh, definitely. Were you excited to see him come back to, you know? Most definitely, man. I'm always After 13 years, to see a real one, you know, be able to go through that situation and be released back to their family, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and especially when you go through your situation and stand on it like the way he did, you know? You gotta understand this BG man. You know BG have a lot of information if he wanted to indulge in any of it. Stand up guy, you'll never hear anything about anything, and I respect that. Wow, who who when you look at like today, like down in New Orleans, who would who the music wise, who do you see and who really like when you see it, you like damn he doing his thing. Right for now. Damn sure he is. Nine for nine. Uh, and then you have you have another youngin in the uh, city called Y D the Illis. You know about Y D the Illis? Mm, I've heard of it. Yeah, uh, another up and coming. Got the city buzzing. Got the city backing it. Wow. When you think about like uh, the cash money movement, I got to ask you these questions. The cash money movement uh, when it first happened, being that you was in music. How big was it for you to see, you know, Barry Man Slim them come from the trenches like that? It was very big, cause like I said, when the Hot Boys was coming out, we had the YG coming out. So we really trying to accomplish the same thing, we trying to follow the same blueprint with Baby, and they do the same exact thing. <laughs> but downtown. But downtown. Yeah. Wow. So do downtown and uptown, they don't, do they rock or they don't yeah, rock? Yeah, man. Like I just told you, like, Cali above. Chaotic, you know, but all the uptown parties. Cali Bar, he was on here. Little Soldier Slim. All right, man, that's all my homies. That's hard. So do you, when you when you think about it, you you know, uh, Mac, we had him on the show as well. Mac? Uh, Mac is a, a different man. He did 21 years, right? Yeah. And But when you see him, you know, he still has a, his confidence. He yeah. never lost his confidence. Yeah. He still speak with integrity and... 
he still he he has forgiveness and and you can see the humbleness all through his heart, man. How is it? How big is that when you see Mac come home? Uh, major. Like since we um, Mac, that brings me to I have a movie on the way that I wrote what? and directed. It's called Sidewalks the Movie. Street okay, saying for everybody why you made sidewalks, you know. And Mac is in the movie. Mac in the movie. Mac in the movie. Kelly above in the movie. Wacko, Skip. They in the movie? Man, we got everybody in the movie, man. Snipe. Really? Did Ace, Ziggy Ace, Ziggy Ace in the movie? Nigga the Wiggler. Who? You know Ace? He be with Vaughn. Ace? Yeah. You no, know, Ace. He was in Kelly or Vaughn. Ace have a movie on They the do have. Yeah, they came in. Super Rich. That's Yeah, man. Y'all working down yeah, there. Man, we working down there, man. New Orleans as a whole, we, we, we working, man. Wow, that's crazy, man. I love it though. I love the fact, man. So, like, what, what, what time? Like, you, I said, uh, uh, Mac, but no limit. I know they, the older, but Fiend and all those guys. You remember seeing them when that movement was going on as well? Yeah, and they were celebrities. Wow, that's that's how they always was going to be looked at as celebrities because I always was going to the concert. Wow, so a celebrity. Wow, yeah. Shout out to KLC, that's my boy, man. Shout out to KLC. Love KL, man. KL, show me mad love. One of my early. I just saw KL at the Mac concert. Did you? Mm Mm-hmm. He took a picture and talked. Because he saw one of my other interviews that I had done. He was like, man, I like how you, you know, how you. Energy is. It's, um, uh, who was I going to say? D1. Man, D1. You know D1? No, I don't. Well, I know D1. He a positive dude, man. Because I have met D1 before, but me and D1 never built a relationship. Never built a relationship. No, but. Because he's younger, too. I I see everything that he's doing, and I salute him for, you know, for being that opposing verse to, you know, the things that are really deteriorating the mindset of our young black people. Wow. That's real. That's a real one. Man, now who you got with you today? Who is this guy right here? Man, right there, that's my little brother Rivers. Rivers? Y'all man. got some projects coming together, man, you say? Man, me and Rivers got a project coming called Dirty Rivers. Oh, yeah? Yeah, man. Hey, what what made that, y'all link that, up? Man, that young boy a beast, man, when it comes to rapping, man. Oh, yeah? Yes, indeed. How did y'all even know each other? Just in the same neighborhood? No, we was introduced to each other through my other homie, King Mike. Shout out King Mike. He is the lead character, Big Bank, in my movie, Sidewalks. Wow. That's crazy, man. Y'all be just linking and working. The work bringing y'all together, yeah. nigga. Little it's the Soul work. Slim in the movie. Everybody, he, Little in, Soldier, I'm he in the movie, too. He in the movie. You, you go back down there to jump in the movie? Everybody in the oh, movie, man. Because it's filmed down there, right? Yeah, it's filmed down there, man. Shout out SMG Jig, like Uptown Jig. We chop a city. Let me ask you something, man. And this is this this is something that I think about all the time. With Baton Rouge being just forty five minutes to an hour away, uh, how how have you ever linked with any of those artists? I always think about how that you know that separation is there, but it's really not that far. No, I never really had a connection to anyone from Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. Took it's not like I wouldn't. Yeah, it just never was. Connected. But you li- you heard boosting him. You heard yeah. you heard Webb and boosting yeah. Baton Rouge. I- like hard artists, <laughs> like they got NBA hard young boy. And I, I like that they have the sound. You know that's Baton Rouge when you hear these artists. You feel me? You can tell. And they and they stay, you know, to their craft. They they sound, and that's what I respect. You know, but I never had a chance to like link with them, link with anyone of them. Cause you got to think like I was really in the streets of New Orleans. I really wasn't. Like linking with nobody or doing anything, I just was I was doing music, but New Orleans, New Orleans, you know, because I don't really like to go nowhere. I can't bring a gun, <laughs> so <laughs> I wasn't really going too many places. But now, you know, I, I'm more mature. I'm a grown man. I'm able to go places, conduct myself in a different manner, you know. But that's why a lot of things, you know, I'm not a part of. Like even when they had the uh, New Orleans exposed and they was going around. Can, like I'm, at this time, I'm in the street. I'm not even about to get on the camera. Wow. Do you, um, when it comes down to C murder, did mm-hmm. you keep up with that? And, and, and man, free C. Like uh, when you hear all the controversy surrounding him. Um, I definitely everybody from 
Silk the Shock, I interviewed him. You know, that's his brother. You know, his Free C Murder Movement was going down. I interviewed uh, KL, everybody, you know, want to see C come home, man. Um, that's going to be crazy, man. That's I know gonna that he going to make it home, bro. Yeah, they going to have to let him home, bro, because from my knowledge, bro, that man didn't. Didn't do that. Everybody say like the that. The streets of New Orleans, you know how the streets, the streets from day one said, nah. But yeah. those people had their agenda on, you know, what they was trying to do. And yeah, and, and I, I think. he make it out that situation. Yeah, man. he wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't. Um, it wasn't a trigger man. No, nah, but at the end of the day, and he ain't going to speak on what happened in that situation. That's not his place. That's for the police to, to find out. out. But, it, and it, but they're holding him just because of that. That's got a lot to do with it. And, and that's why we need these laws to be different, man. Like, where well, you can't just do that, man. Why? Look at the, look at the time you taking this man away from his family, the memories, the experiences, the birthdays, the debts, and then to let him go? <laughs> no, There's no reparation for that. No. Like, you know, but they're doing it so freely because... Us as a people, we we ain't really Unified. making them. We not making them. You know, we gotta make them do whatever we want to do, and we have to make them see that we are together. That's the only way. As long as they know I could put you against you and you against you, be happy with that. They ain't gonna never unify. They ain't gonna never. But if they unify, wow, that's why they fight so hard to keep it. You know. Yeah, I had Kunta on here from down there, and Kunta had, was locked up for 28 and a half years, and then, you know, he was exonerated because they had him wrong. Crazy. And, and you know, I had uh, George on here, which was the brother of the guy who got killed, which was the the, the one that died in West Bank with yeah. C. Murder, uh, and all of them was at the club that night, and mm -hmm. Soldier Slim, me, they were there, you came later. I could never understand that part of it. But at any rate, um, one thing he told me, he was like, man, I got the paperwork. The paperwork, you know, it don't lie. And I was like, no, the paperwork do lie because I can't trust that paperwork because I'm interviewing you today. But just not even a week ago, I was interviewing Kunta, who'd been exonerated and was in prison, wrongly accused for 28 and a half years. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? He had paperwork. And he had paperwork on him, just like you got paperwork on C in the situation he was in. So I had to break that down. That was a tough interview for me. Because I wanted to make sure I didn't want to go be one sided, but I, right. you know I wanted trying to let to George fair. speak too trying because to that's fair. his brother and he lost a brother. But you trying to but then both of Master P and George lost brothers when this brothers. incident happened. Nobody won in the situation. Nobody. Only one won was the killer. The killer and the system. Yeah, but the killer, which is won. the ultimate killer. Be the killer won because. They focused on one person. They're not even looking for me. You see what I'm saying? That's real. The killer is like, oh, man. Probably sad that he murdered. I had to go down for it, but I'm glad they're not looking for me. And then if he's passed away now, it'll never change. If he's dead now, he'll but never the speak crazy up. Part is they never even tried to see if they had another person. They felt like they had their person. And that's just what they so wanted built it to the be. the investigation to prove your person. Yeah. Not just going straight off facts. Like, if you go straight off facts, then that's different. But now that you already have just picked this one person, you're going to build, you know, the facts around you. Wow. Do you ever, uh, in, you ever, what about Juvie Tuesday down there? I mm -hmm. hear about Juvie Tuesday. You ever enjoy Juvie Tuesday? I used to be in Juvie Tuesday every Tuesday. <laughs> every Tuesday, man. Shout out to Juvie, man. I used to be in Juvie Tuesday every Tuesday. That used to be my spot. You know, say what you say about Birdman, but. All of those guys link back with Birdman in some mm -hmm. type of way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They say this, or, or Birdman and Slim, or Cash Money, Cause, cause but business, they all respect them. Business separated them. They separate, yeah, they, that's yeah, right. Because they didn't understand business. Early on. Birdman understood the business early on, and he was taking care of the business. They wasn't understanding the business of it. Mm. I don't fall, Birdman, because that's business. And, and, well, and usually when you put your money up, you're a boss. And if you put the money up first, you're going to be more tentative to how, how am I going to recoup yes. what I'm putting up. It's so it makes business. you educate yourself that's first and that's foremost how, that's how so you don't lose your money. Uh, artists don't understand that if these people give you this check for this amount of money, 
your album has to make that amount of money first before you see any money from anything. But see, what's happening is the game, they got so many young rappers now that's talented with no knowledge. It's getting them, getting them, putting them under. And, you know, these dudes' career, even if, if the ones that do make it, then they wind up on a podcast talking about how the situation was. But just think about all those that didn't even make it to that point to the podcast even just tell you that that happened to them. Damn. Like, this is it's, it's a shady business, man. It's worse than the streets because people could legally play you. Legally play. Is it? I, I'm going to bring up something because a lot of times they say Soldier Slim, they say he was the Tupac of New Orleans. And recently, um, Keefe D, after almost 30 years, 27 yeah. years later, he's arrested for the mm-hmm. murder of Tupac. Like, what's up with that? I, I, I tripped when I seen that. Could you believe that happened? Like 30 years later, because he done wrote books and jumped on podcasts. Like you was just saying, you kept saying podcast. He done jumped on these damn podcasts and then went to talking. Yeah, but he was talking in a way to, uh, I'm quite sure he had to know that these was incriminating statements that he was making. Uh, you, well, if you didn't, you won't have nobody around you that'll tell you. I guarantee you if I start saying the wrong thing, that boy going to be in stop me. Hey, hey, hey. We'll be, like, because we ain't no, no, indeed, no, you know? Yeah. Like, because I could just get caught up in it and just go to talking. I, you know, just say, even though I'm mindful of it, but I guarantee you, that boy. He going to say, man, what yeah. are you doing, man? What's up, man? What you doing? Man, because you got to think about it. Keep your D, though. Friends they said don't he had, friends accountable no They more. say he had cancer or something, and that's why he thought he was going to die, but he, he didn't die. He said he, <laughs> he survived. <laughs> and he done told all this stuff, man. They done got him locked up. He said, God going to be with me. You heard me? That's what he said. God still going to be with him. Locked up or not? Locked up or not. He might walk out them doors. You don't never know what these folk go do, man. But it's all about what God want for his life. That's right. That's right. And now they talking about they gonna come get my boy P Diddy behind and they even give out million dollars. These folks is like they coming up with all kind of ways to make this this situation. I trip off all the brothers that be getting you know like major paper, and then something happen like the where it be like no 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 he here's something we gonna get some on it. It's like somebody trying to take these people out of these positions, man. I think. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, it ain't like. I think it's intentional. I think none of this is coincidence, and that's why I have to watch what I say. And and when I'm doing these interviews, that's why I say I'm mindful, I'm very intelligent. Got a lot of things I can speak on, but I don't feel like I'm in a strong enough position to to hold myself down if repercussions were to come from speaking out about certain things, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm still a little small fry, you know? It's too easy for them to, to, to crush me. Yeah. So I got to hold my tongue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Like, man, um, what, you, what, um, how can people get a hold of you, first of all? Man, contact me through Instagram. Derzaya, D-I-R-T-Z as in zebra, I-R-E, at gmail.com. Talk to you artists of all time, too. Derzaya, just regular. Oh, you oh, you Instagram. Derzaya, just put it in, you know, any streaming platform. I ain't never heard that name before. You? You about to hear it from now on. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you got the only, you the only dirt side, nigga. Yeah, this is everything about me is original. Wow. Because I have to, I have to be what God wants me to be in order for people to receive me. I have to be original. If I come like something else, you gonna just brush it off as like that. That. But see me, you gotta tune in. You gotta see what oh, it's something new. Yeah. Um. The top three artists of all time, dead or alive, any genre. Top three artists. Mm-hmm. Lil Wayne. Okay. Number one, Lil Wayne. Stop playing. Number one is Lil Wayne. Number, number two, two is gonna be Soldier Slim. And number three, me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I knew you were gonna do it. You Most should. Definitely. You deserve it. Most You're. Definitely. I got another question because all that you've been through. Yes. Um, if you if someone's supposed to do a documentary on you. Mm-hmm. 
what would you want the main focus of that documentary to be about? That God is good. That see the documentary will delve more into my personal life, and you'll see that I used to be a drug addict, heroin and cocaine. See, we didn't even get into that mm -hmm. topic, but these things that the documentary would delve into, like I have my autobiography called Blessed and didn't even know it. Mm. Man, look up, man. Y'all gotta stay tuned to the I'm gonna be. I'm gonna stay <laughs> when coming When is that back coming out? out? You can always oh, call me. No, yeah. You don't know when it. It hasn't no, been written my yet. My life is just steady developing. Okay, so you haven't started on no, it. No, it started, okay. but Not it started funny. because that that part is right down. But man, I've been lifing, and I've been loving it. I'm alive. Mm-hmm. So whenever you had your accident, were you on drugs at that time? Nah, I've been off okay. drugs. I've been off, I've been clean about to be like 16 years. Mm. I've been clean off drugs, but I was on drugs for like 17 years. My what, whole 20s. 20s. What inspired you or what to, to, to get off of it and to stay off of My it? My son. That's the biggest motivator that I could have had. My son. Mm. Like once I had a child, it was more than me. When it's just me, I could live reckless. I could do things. I could, you know, if I hurt anybody, it's going to be a grown up. I feel like they can handle it. They've been hurt before. But that child, that's your responsibility, you know? And but I know so I'm many people. I know so many people who are adults who have kids and struggling. With that drug addiction, Listen, though. I didn't went to rehabs. I went to my grandfather. My grandfather had a rehab. My grandfather is a preacher. Mm -hmm. He's Superintendent John E. Pierre at Living Witness Church of God in Christ. Wow. Where I'm a member. And I was in that program where I met King Mike at. It was a six-month drug rehabilitation program. And through that process, he told me one thing that helped me because I hadn't been in rehab so many times. Every time I felt like I wanted to stop, I went to rehab, but then sometimes I relapsed back to get loaded. But he told me, you can go to rehab, you can go to jail, all that. He said, but nothing beats a made of mine. Mm -hmm. And that, that resonated so powerful with me to well. I live by that. Nothing, nothing beats me. If you want to do something and you make up your mind to do it, you you're gonna, gonna do it. it. And I done that. So you don't believe in? Because I hear people talk about, well, because where we're located right now, right mm -hmm. next door is an AA, oh, right? For meetings, be for meetings and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And I've spoken to some of them before, and they're, they're saying that some people just have that addictive personality where they just can't get over certain things as easy as somebody yeah, who is. As long as that person think like that, that person will have an addictive personality. Mm. The minute they stop thinking that I have an addictive personality, you gonna stop having an addictive personality. It's all on you. A lot of people wanna get off drugs for other people. Mm -hmm. Not for themselves, because the family, or because the kids, or because the wife, or because the job, or because of whatever. So they'll get off drugs, but they'll never get off drugs. No? Mm -hmm. They'll just wow. stop using for that meantime to please whoever it is they're trying to please. And behind, they, they moving and shaking and still doing the same thing, which eventually gonna show itself because that would like to make a fool out here in front of God. I agree with you because I always tell people who I know that is struggling with stuff like that is the fact that, number one, you have to know your triggers. Number two, you have to, because you get clean because of that person, but as soon as that trigger come around or something happened, that person pissed you off, you're going right back. According to AA meetings, I shouldn't be drinking. I shouldn't be smoking weed. Cause all that could trigger me back to getting loaded. I call bullshit. 
Man, I was looking at some of your older songs, Everything man. Everything ain't for everybody, though. That's true. I was looking at some of your older music, man. Like, yeah. like what? I, I'm gonna go back and listen to some more of it. But like, what's the? It, when you look back at your older music and you think back to those times, what 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 comes to mind? Like the older, older, the music. older, older music, the older videos. Just the people that's not here with me on my journey. Yeah. That's that's what I see the most. A lot of people that's in my videos, a lot of people that's in the movie, a lot of people that they just they not here anymore. Oh. You know? And some of the content I've been holding back on putting out because, you know, some of those wounds are still fresh to people. People. You know? And before I just take my you know, do my thing with it, I always gonna be respectful. You know, but I'm still gonna do it, but I'm gonna be respectful, you know? That's hard, man. But that's the way it's supposed to be, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Desire. Thank man, you we forever. love you, bro. We appreciate you for Thank coming you, on our bro. show. Forever we, we brothers. Man, you can home, always man. come here. Any project you're trying to drop, whatever you're doing, you put you got my number. I appreciate All you gotta you, do is holler. I'm gonna give you some cards and whatever else you need, man. Appreciate like I said, you, 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 you're a stand-up guy. I knew God had me on a mission when I first talked to you on Shout the phone. Shout out GDP. Man, GDP is one that you got to shout out because, you know, GDP, I always man. call, that's my that's my fact check guy. Like, I Are call. You doing too much of major stuff. Bro, that's, that's I be calling that dude you. anytime Ooh, somebody I'm from trying, New Orleans I'm reach out to, to me. Out who's sweeping GD under the rug, bro? I don't think nobody is. I think it's you You said in a, a mouthful throughout all this interview, you kept talking about God. God right. put people where they need to be. So where GD, GD is. Really need to be right there where he at. Exactly, because he's helping so many people. You're right about and then his brother is locked up, so he's there in a situation where his brother can be helped in his situation but I too. I know he can have a much bigger platform for the amount of people that he helping. In due time, I think that, we don't know what's coming up in the future. But I think he's doing a lot more than we giving credit to. Like I, there's a not lot going me, on because I'm giving credit. No, I'm talking about far as the people that yes, he touched and helped. Yes, it's yes, some people. What what's understand. that little kid that passed away? Bty. Exactly. Like, think about how he was in his life. Yes. And he man. connected the dots yes. for him. Yes. He's also helping... Uh, YD the Illis. Yeah, but the, but the other kid that's locked up that Dude, came on our show. Jay Merck. Jay Merck. Mm -hmm. Jay Merck. All these people. And when I called GD, he'd be like, man, I'm going to get on the phone with Jay Merck. You know, there's a scripture that says, I was in prison and you didn't visit me. Right. He's fulfilling a, a, a visiting situation in his lifestyle that a lot of people ain't even touching. Right. You putting you putting something that people very rarely do and making it something normal for yourself. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. It's major, man. He's supposed yeah. to be getting more recognition for these type of things, but Man, come on, let's talk about game, it for a second. The game's so fake right now and so watered down to the fact that being real is 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 it's just being pushed to the side, but then some some foolishness, like say his name get caught up in a scandal, he'll be on. But I think Every he block. dope, bro, because you gotta realize, man, this dude just went crazy viral. Him and Birdman was on he a. Is. They both him and Birdman was on a. It, yeah, but. But, he shouldn't have to go viral. He is it, viral. I get it. But no, every, anybody is getting on no FaceTime with Birdman and TMZ and everybody's sharing it. That's more major than most niggas will see their whole career. It you got is. rappers and everybody trying to do that. It so is. when we look at GDP, we see what's going on. Mm -hmm. we, we understand it. People mm -hmm. see it. Most people don't acknowledge anything. anything. But you got to, the Bible says so you got to take it by force. By force. You got to take it. So I think that's the main thing. I think, but when you look at a GDP and you look at what he's done in New Orleans, being that spokesman, man, shout out to my boy uh, Dallas. Uh, say uh, no, no, not say cheese, uh, but shout out to say cheese too. But Big D the mogul, cause oh, he the one linked me with with GD, okay. and 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 I'm just you know like. When I went to New Orleans, the first thing I did was call, it had to be God, I called Big D. And Big D said, you need to holler at GD. As soon as I hollered at GD, well, I hollered at KLC first and ran a check on GD. He didn't know that. <laughs> I ran a check on it with KLC first because KLC was my reason for coming. Mm -hmm. So I was like, KLC was GD. And he's like, he's the spokesman. You know, and so at the end of the day, you know, he checks out. Mm -hmm. He is a he guy that everything. checks out. Yep. Everything he checks everything. out, man. 
So I think I thank God for GD, man, because without GD, a lot of the New Orleans stuff you see popping off from Boss Talk 101, yeah, it wouldn't be happening be, like that, man. That's what I'm saying, man. Shout out to GD, man. Yeah, man. Man, thank God, man, again, for you being here, man. We had shut down and started back up. Ain't that crazy? Mm -hmm. That's how that spirit be. Nobody mm -hmm. know which way it's going to go or come from. That's you know what I'm talking just, about? Just stay open. Man, mm -hmm. you make it to where people can't make excuses. You can't say you can't go on. Because of people that. like you... People, my leg might be hurting a little bit. Mm -hmm. I still got to keep going. Because that's what going. you told me. You That's what Booby Black told you. Yeah. You, you, still do you. Got do leg. you. That's what, still do you. That's hard, man. Check it, man. Mm -hmm. Hey, man. Thank you for coming on the show. Boss this, Talk 101. Where the boss is told. Where the boss is told. Man, check it, man. Been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we out.